Hello. The title of my lesson is Encourage One Another. Please, let's turn to our Bibles in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through 25. It reads, Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. We need to think about how to encourage one another. Let's look at each other. Let's see how we can encourage and help each other. For example, let's show love. Let's do good deeds. Let's not miss our church services. Some people are in the habit of doing that. But we need to meet together. And we need to encourage one another. You should do it more and more as the day of Jesus comes. Two very important things that I'm going to share. Love from the heart. The heart is very selfish. Number two, good things. How to do good things. The heart is lazy. For example, if I'm thinking about buying, uh, going to the store, fixing up my house, I get very interested in that, but then I may see some in the church, some brothers and sisters that may be sad, that may need some encouragement from the prayer list. How can I help them? I think about that, and I see some pictures. Maybe I can text them, maybe I can help them, or maybe I can call them or email them. Then they will feel better about that. Hmm. Okay, number one and number two, love. And number two, do good things. So how? I'm going to show you. Verse 25 says, We shouldn't be missing our church services. Some people are in the habit of doing that. We should encourage one another. Wow. Why? Why do we make it a bad habit to miss church, church services? Some people think only on Sundays, that's important. What about Wednesdays? What about Fridays? You should always be excited to go and meet with the church. When you meet with the church, three things. What is your attitude about it? Number one, are you used to thinking about it too much? Oh, I don't want to go again. Maybe number two, you're bored, you're doubtful about whether you want to meet with the church. Or number three, you're very interested, you're excited, you're eager to go and fellowship, you want to focus your mind on God. Which of those three is your attitude? Which of those three do you think about? The verse in the Bible in Hebrews 23, verse 22, it says, Hebrews 3, 12 to 14 says, Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day as long as it is called today that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. But we have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. So, brothers and sisters, be careful that none of you have a sinful an unbelieving heart. You gotta stop that. You gotta fo stop following those thoughts and follow God. Encourage one another every day. As long as it's called today, don't wait. Don't wait another minute for fellowship. Don't say next time. The heart may be hardened. The heart is very sinful, very foolish. Don't follow other people. We should always share with each other and be together in Christ. That is true. If we continue till the end, continue faithful, continue true. I, since I was a little girl, I grew up in the church with my family. My dad was always encouraging my sister, Yvette, look, your sister needs an interpreter because I need to understand what the Bible is saying and I wanted to understand it. Also, I was teaching two other cousins. One girl, I was asking her to please help me during church services. 
She really didn't know sign language, but she was eager to learn. So I was looking at her sister. She was always very, very busy, my sister, with her kids. She was not able to help interpret for me often. So I was encouraging my nieces and my nephews during the services. But nobody else, nobody else was able to interpret for me. So I kept looking and I saw another young sister and I asked her, would you like to learn sign language and help me understand? And she said yes. She was very excited about that. She wanted to learn. She did learn. Now, I had three more girls helping interpret for me. Fast, I met Pedro and he wanted to learn ASL as well and wanted to interpret. So I taught him. He was falling in love with me and I said, wait a minute, you need to learn how to interpret for me first. So when Pedro and I moved to Long Island, I was very surprised. I saw a lot of brothers and sisters knowing sign language, Lynn and Lisa were two of them. So I felt very satisfied. I was felt very calm about that. But more and more sisters started and wanted to learn. However, on Sundays and Fridays, yes, at Long Island, we were fine. There were interpreters for me. But on Wednesday night, since it was a Bible class in a different place, there was nobody there who knew sign language and could interpret for me. Pedro was teaching the Bible class, and he was trying to sign at the same time, but he couldn't. He wasn't, an he wasn't experienced enough. So then we met a brother, Michael, and we asked him, can you please help us interpret? Michael didn't know any sign at all, but with a lot of patience, a lot of help, we helped him, we taught him. Pedro and I together work with him to teach him sign language and now Michael has improved so much in ASL. Sometimes I used to feel very discouraged. I didn't want to meet together with the church because nobody really knew how to speak sign language so I felt uncomfortable people looking at me perhaps feeling pity for me. I felt like I was a burden but I nevertheless decided I need to go to church. I need to be saved. And I was convicted about the Bible verses, like Matthew chapter 8, verses 18 through 22. It reads, Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, First let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. So many people followed Jesus. And this one teacher of the law said to him, Hey, I'm, I want to follow you wherever you go, Jesus. Jesus said, What? He said, Well, the foxes, you know, they live in the hole, the birds. They have their nest to go, but me, I'm the son of God, I don't have anywhere to lay my head. This other man came over to him, a disciple, and he said, Lord, I want to follow you, but wait, i got to first bury my father. Jesus said, what? Jesus said, follow me, let the dead bury themselves. Wow. Do you understand what it means to let the dead bury the dead or what he meant? Well, it was a family responsibility. He needed to take care of his parents and then when they died, he was free to follow Jesus. But remember, Jesus said, follow me first. Wow, that means that I have some priorities here. My families can be very challenging to my spiritual life. My Sundays, my Wednesdays, my Fridays, perhaps things can interrupt them, like my work, my boss. He may say, look, you got to stay in work late. You can't go to meet at church. Or maybe somebody invites me to a party, a birthday party or a wedding or a baby shower or something. Or maybe there's a graduation. Third, maybe there's a funeral. Fourth, maybe I'm just busy at home. Gosh, I got a lot to do. Laundry, I to clean the clothes. I don't want to let that stuff accumulate, so maybe I should just stay home and 
do everything while my family goes to services. Maybe I'm busy with a new baby or maybe I just have a lot of kids. Maybe I get sick. Maybe I, my health is failing. Maybe in any little instance of sickness I'm ready to not go to church. How does your heart feel about that? Well, you know what? If I'm very interested in serving my family and I want to put them first, I can't really let anything interrupt that. But i got to be careful, though. For example, I love Jesus, but I don't want to go to church. Some people say that. Is that true? Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 through 23. It says, he put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all and all. So, Jesus, see, the church is it, it, his body. Jesus is the same as the church. It's not my opinion. That's what the Bible says. Okay, let's pause for a moment. 